Okay, so let's start again. I got the mug working this time, so I don't have to shout. Okay, quick recap. So we know that the Lagrange uh, and Newton pol polynomials. Satisfy a given equation. Satisfy. Satisfy relation f of x equals polynomial of degree n plus some kind of error. Next, we want to minimize this error here. error written in a general form has some kind of Q or quotient F n plus 1 times differentiated psi over u plus 1 factorial and Q x is this x minus k k zero all the way up to n. <coughs> so next we want to select these nodes x of k or not well x k's such that this is minimized. So that means we are looking for the optimal placement of the interpolating points. Okay, how do we find these? Well, enter the Chebyshev polynomial. These are only defined in the interval for x from minus 1 to 1. For the first one, well, it's not going to look like a polynomial, but it is. That's the cosine of n times arcus cosine or cos or inverse co uh, cosine hmm? cosine no not, not cos arcus cosine uh, or just inverse of it or and Zero or more. Okay. Going by this, we have that zero. That's just basically cosine of zero because n is zero, zero, and it's one. Next one, p one. I'm just gonna say of x there. P1 of x, that's the cosine of arcus cosine of x. And since the that's the inverse of this, of x. That's the first one. Keep adding terms. <coughs> Use a placeholder. Theta. Arc. Oops. 
cosine of x, meaning that x equals to cosine of theta. So, so then we have that t n of theta x. So we do small transformation. We, we just introduce this. It's easier to keep track of. We can do this. It's just why not? The n of theta, <coughs> and we don't have to write this uh, octus cosine all the time. Theta, like so, and now theta will be in the range zero to pi, because x is from minus one. And then we remember that cosine of alpha plus beta sine of alpha beta minus <coughs> sine alpha and beta. That's a trigonometric relation. Okay, so now we can use this to define a recursive relation for all of these Debeshev polynomials. Where we note that of n plus one Theta equals, well, cosine of, what is that? N x one theta cosine of N theta plus theta, like so. My alpha, beta, that's the end of the line of theta, theta minus sine, and theta times the sine, theta. Okay, and then we do in a similar fashion for n, n minus 1, theta, cosine, theta, theta, plus, sine of, theta, sine of, theta. And if you then add these two relations, so get plus one equals two cosine theta sine of theta. Then we have our recursive relation. So here I've just calculated it. So I mean t plus one minus one. Then these two will cancel. And then we can return to the variable x over there. We get that one minus x two x because this one that's going to be cosine of 
arc is cosine of x, so this one becomes x, I put it in front. Cosine <coughs> of n, cosine of x minus epsilon of x. So we get n u plus one x equals u x. x minus u minus 1 x. We do some more <coughs> algebra. And that's a recursive relation. And we have the two first to first, that's just 1 and x. So the next one, right, this function. Questions? Is it okay? Okay, so we know the first two. That's zero is going to be one, P one. Looking at this over here, we have that P2 should be 2x times T1. T1 is just x minus n minus 1, which is 1. 2x squared minus 1. 3, well, <coughs> that's 2x times u x squared minus 1 minus 1 minus x. And then we get four over 3 x and so on and so forth. So next one, four, same thing, eight x over four, eight plus one. And the cool thing about these Chebyshev polynomials is that they are orthogonal. And how can two polynomials be orthogonal? Well, that's the that depends on the inner product you give them, though. But in the canonical um, inner product on this space, it's from minus one, one f of x times g of x dx. So here. F could be T0 and G could be well, T1 or T2. And if you try to make this integral, you see that you will get just 0. Quite cool, I think. So they are orthogonal polo polynomials. What we could also do with this norm, we could we could scale them. <coughs> so I'm not sure if they have the length one as they are now. Okay, 
So uh, most of the, or I think all of the code I show in this class, you can find it here. Again, GitHub. Some of it could actually help you in the uh, exercise as well, but yeah. Uh, we're in this folder now, installation. And I can find all the scripts I'm going to show. Now we want Kebyshev polynomials. So these are the first two. So I've defined T0 in kind of a weird way. Um, but it's just 1 plus 0 of x's. It's the same as just 1. And T1 is x. Then I abuse... Um, then I abuse uh, the eval function. So actually I create a string, which is this, which is the, oh, this i here is going to be zero, and then, then yeah, i minus one, and i minus two. So just kind of create a, a, uh, a function here. Then I evaluate the string. It is not really pretty, but it works. It's a hack. And then I just pop in. So the three first, you see they kind of fill out. So this is the T0, which is 1, T1, X. And then you have second degree, third degree polynomial, and so on. And all of them go for minus 1, 1. So defined here are minus 1, 1. <coughs> we then try to add more. So let's say. 10, which have polynomials. You see that I have a tendency to actually fill out this space. So if I just try 100, this will mostly fill. So they are kind of, well, not exactly space filling, but they are a really good base polynomial space. Because they are orthogonal. So that's functions for you. Okay, that was a kind of Side note. But we have a problem with these. They are only defined in the interval from minus 1 to 1. What can we do? We can try to stretch them. How do we stretch them? Well, internal transformation, basically. So we want to take our Chebyshev polynomials and stretch or squeeze them such that they have the same range as the function we are trying to place. Or we do it the other way, that we squeeze and stretch our function that we want to approximate. I get it on the same interval as the Chebyshev polynomials. transformation. So we want to interpolate over a b. But Chebyshev polynomials are only defined defined um, <coughs> from minus one to one. This one, to one. So we want to go from <coughs> a b to x. 
to this interval minus 1, 1, small t domain, like so. What would you do then is x t minus a divided by 2 times t plus a plus b divided by 2. So then we go from t domain to the x domain. So this formula, or we could go the other way, where t equals 2 x minus a divided by b minus a minus 1. This have that a x b and one t one. So we can do a quick check. Okay, so in this, if we insert a, then it's going to be well a minus a. So this is zero. We end up on minus one. If we put in b, then it's b minus a divided by b minus a times 2. Oh, should be more up here. So, so then we have this thing is 2 minus 1. We end up at 1. So it's both ends. <coughs> so then we can calculate the Chebyshev nodes on minus 1 to 1. Those are So these are the best spaced nodes in this interval. Those are going to be k cosine two and one minus t. K. These are the roots of the polynomials. B plus two. Where did I get it right? Way up and which will be the last. Okay, so first we have to find those, and then we have to transform those nodes over to our, our AB, or X domain, which is basically we apply this formula. Uh, X, and we get to know K equals K minus A to this one plus A plus divided by two. Again, K zero to N. Okay. 
Okay, so that's the interpolating nodes we want. Now to construct the rest of the polynomial, well, we, ha we have to weigh all of the different Jeff Jeff <coughs> polynomials. <coughs> so how do we construct them? We have our points, so f of x approximately equal to this p of degree n. So this n isn't for Newton, it's for the, the polynomial degree. So x, j equals 1, all the way up to n, pj. <coughs> ah, I'm totally going of <coughs> x where n is going to be the degree of the polynomial degree. degree and cj that's the weight weight of all the different polynomials so we do a summation of Problem here is finding these weights. We know how to do now. <clears throat> we know how to construct J's, so the Chebyshev polynomials. We only need to find the weights. So, skipping details here. I apologize. <coughs> Zero and. The good thing about these coefficients are weights. Let's take a shortcut later. Not too tough. P zero of k x k, and this one is just one for k's. So it's just the um. Oh, almost average. No, it is average. One. So this is just the average of the function of all the points we're using. So that's the first one. We can just ask ourselves, does this make sense? That if we are only using, if you're only using zero, does it make sense that the first coefficient is the average of the function at all the points? That should make sense, because then you, are, then you are, well, that's the best you can do. Just take the average of the function, and that's the best fit. All of the rest of the points, J, okay. <clears throat> and well, one, which is kind of averaging zero. Okay, J. But we already know evaluate two, so we can use them plus one to zero n okay. function evaluations. J 
Okay. Okay, but does this really help us? It does. Okay, so now we'll try to interpolate um, like example. Let's see if it actually gives us a better fit. So, if this is so, <clears throat> here we are on the interval from minus one to one, if I remember correctly. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, don't. Okay, so we have two ways of doing it. Or, well, actually, many ways. But in this case, I've uh, picked equidistant point, meaning that the distance between each point is the same, so equidistant. Uh, and then these are the Chebyshev points. And then we're trying to interplay. So this is a Newton polynomial. <coughs> yes, so this is a Newton polynomial with where we're using the um, uh, equidistant points. And the other one is where we're trying to use Chebyshev points. Because in essence, this polynomial you get when using uh, the well, Chebyshev polynomials, the basis is the same as Lagrange polynomials, is the same as the Newton polynomials. Take it off order three and see what happens. Ah, mm, not enough. Of course, this is four. Has to be four. So we are approximating the exponential fun uh, function between minus one and one, and it looks like both the equidistant points and the Chebyshev points approximated fairly okay in this sense. But if you look at the error, see that. Most, it looks like the Chebyshev is better this area, yeah, around here, and then equidistant is actually better around zero. What could that be? Well, the sampling here, we've used four points, I would assume the equidistant points, they are more uh, they are, well, see it from here. It's this point, this point, and this point. That's, one. That's the equi equidistant point. So the uh, <coughs> interpolation of the function will be exact here. So that's why the error is zero. There. Where's the Chebyshev points? One of them is there. 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 And one of them is there. So, of course, when you're further away from the points, it's going to be less accurate. But it's overall a bit better. So we can look at this. The max equidistant error is better than the max Chebyshev error. Oh, no. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, the max so the max error is better for the Chebyshevs. But in some regions, 
this verse, fortunately. But overall, they are better points. They're also better at defeating something called Runga's phenomena, which I think is best to actually illustrate here instead of on the blackboard. So we'll start slow with k equals 3, 2. It's going to be a. Yeah, no, that was. Uh, 3. We get polynomial at least. 3, 2. Okay, so what we're looking at now is the ringing phenomena. We're trying to, I mean, you don't see the ringing that much in this case, but you will. So the function we are looking at now is sometimes called, called Runge's function as f of x equals 1 over 1 plus 25x squared. Is that it? Yes. Okay, but this is not this is a really bad fit, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really bad fit. So we need to increase the uh, number of points here. So let's increase it to 5. See if it gets any better. Okay. Get a slightly better fit. But we also see that the equidistant ones they have this kind of ringing phenomena here. They are okay. They are kind of following the championship nodes, but not as good. Okay, let's ramp it up with nine points. And here you see more of the ringing phenomena. We're using the same amount of points here, but if we space them in a smart way, so instead of spacing them so I'm just looking where they intersect now. So look at the red one, that's the equidistant points. So this one here, there, there, in the middle, there, there, and there. See, we get these ringing phenomena here at the ends. It's fairly okay in the middle here, but when you get close to the edges, it's a perfect fit at the end, but right before the end, it just bad. But can we actually improve on this if we increase the number of points? Let's try 15. No, we can't. So using equidistant points here, it just get, gets worse. So you see it's fairly okay here, but then shoots up. So, yeah, don't use equidistant points if you want a high-order polynomial interpolation. We can go even further, say 30, and it would just get worse. It just doesn't really work at all with the equidistant points anymore. At all. Questions about that? Then we have time for a cool proof. Okay. So I've been, um, well, today and yesterday, I've been telling you that all of these polynomials. When we use the same points, they will be unique. Okay? But can we actually prove this? The answer is yes. That's what I need. Okay, so we suppose that we are plating through n plus 1 points. Point 
points uh, with an at most n degree polynomial. Poly, like so. P and X. So this PX, we're using the N plus one points, it will have degree at most N. N plus one points with at uh, yeah I try I, I kind of I kind of butchered the sentence there. We use N plus one points um, uh, to construct an at most and Degree polynomial P of X. Does that sentence make more? Okay, so then we have one point. And then we will assume that we have a different one. Assume. that we have different only oh, of of at most three and that interpolates the same n plus one points. Same n plus one points. We call this q of x. So we assume um, P of X is not the same as P of X. This is our assumption. So we're going to prove that this is false by contradiction. Okay? So we consider the rest of this, which is P of X minus Q of X. Then we know that R will be a polynomial, thus the difference between two polynomials will be a polynomial R of X. Poly and Rx has a degree of at most n, since it's just a, a linear combination of P and Q. Okay, so this R can't have a degree higher than N. But we know that R of XI is going to be P of XI, two more minutes, U of XI. Well, by design, both of this 
will be f of x of i, f of x of i, which just give us zero. Okay? So this means that r of x i has n plus one roots. Because this is true for all x i's by the sign. But r of x can't have a degree higher than n by the sign. But this statement tells us that r has a degree higher than n, n plus 1. Or the other possibility is that it's always 0. So points 1 and 2 is contradicting unless r is equal to r1, 2, Unless r of x equals 0, and if r of x equals 0, then 0 equals p of x minus q of x and p of x is the same as q of x. So no matter how you, which algorithm you pick, it's going to be the same polynomial. If you use the Lagrangian, Newtonian, or Chebyshev interpolation, it's going to be the same. So pick the one that you are most familiar with. Um, and again, sorry for taking up your time. 